How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Forever Arsenal podcast. First things first, hit the like button. Let's get it up to a thousand. The love has been shown over the recent shows, as it has been shown all season, to be honest. But I'm seeing the likes go up pretty fast as the episodes come out. So make sure that keeps happening, people. Leave your comments for comments of the day, because we're still going to be doing those towards the end of the show. And all in all, just show some love to the panel. Big up Jordan, big up Lee, and big up James. It's the usual fallback in action. And it's all smiles again. Um, it was very nearly not all smiles. I can't lie to you. That Bournemouth game was a roller coaster to say the least. Um mm. to get into it all. And yeah, we will move. How, how are you feeling, Jordan? Well, hands up already. Back to well, the I, I just got a question. Who do you think is celebrating more this weekend? Arsenal fans or Liverpool fans? Arsenal. Ooh. That's a hard one, you know. Arsenal. There's more at play, but like there's more at stake. Liverpool and United. Oh, yeah. I think beating Maybe your biggest rivals seven. Liverpool, is Liverpool quite fans. A big yeah. I think That's Liverpool fans point. are beyond celebrating. I think they're laughing. Like yeah. you, you know what I mean. Like I think it's beyond. If I were a Liverpool fan, by that sixth goal, I would have even done the whole. Yeah, I'd, I'd have just like James, cackling. Look, <laughs> look, at, look at the last two or three goals. I think it's the last two goals. Look at the bench. They don't even celebrate. They no. don't even they don't even celebrate anymore, which is like the ultimate insult. They're not even celebrate. They're embarrassed. I think they're actually embarrassed. You know what bad. did you know what did uh, make me laugh? I don't know if you guys follow Twitter Spaces ever, but um, you know, obviously a lot of fans like to get together and sort of vent their frustrations after games. Obviously, Liverpool haven't had, been having a good season, and Liverpool fans who have been quite frequently doing these spaces, uh, a little sort of ten second clip did the rounds on social media of all the mics sort of basically allowed on <laughs> and it was nothing but laughing like it was 10 20 30 seconds straight of pure laughing there was no celebrating there was no analysis there was no trolling it was just cackle then i can't blame him i'd have done the same yeah uh, it, 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 yeah to be honest, i guess I, I know what you mean but you know what after the boom of celebrations and and the jubilation again a last minute winner mm. I'm more concerned about these last minute winners than than I, you know, um well, I'm not more concerned than I am happy because I'm over the moon we got the three points because we had to get the three points considering you know we're top of the league and and it was um, it was a must win game but it was a game we should be winning you know without having to worry about it too much and in that game we had to worry about it a lot. Turkish P people didn't want to hear it when I said that 70 minutes against Everton weren't that good. I yeah. didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it when I said the first half, yeah, we were 2 0 up, but you know, there was a lot of transitions, there was a lot of open space, Everton yeah, were running at us. You know, that mm -hmm. wasn't good enough. They didn't want to hear it. And then when I said, actually, it wasn't until we really got that third that it kind of relaxed and we started actually playing our football and creating a load of chances. And I whacked it all out on, on uh, tactical insight. I said 2.4 of our X, uh, of our three XG came in the last 20 minutes, all this stuff. But you're negative, you're negative. This is why. We do these podcasts. This is why we do these shows to actually look at the performance and look deeper. We could all sit here and just clap all the time. Oh, amazing. Aren't we amazing? Aren't we amazing? But it wasn't that surprising that Bournemouth found two goals. It wasn't that surprising that they found a few openings. But I also thought Arsenal did quite well, not just you know when they were 2 0 down, but throughout the game, we're actually playing some decent stuff. And I kind of always felt like they were going to find a way back in. I wasn't. There's a clip I shared on Twitter of my reaction at 2-0 down. And I was saying that Bournemouth have bottled leads and we're not playing terribly and all that. And I wasn't sort of sat there convinced we were going to win the game because three goals in half an hour is something for anyone. But I was thinking, you know, the game's not done. Like We've got more than a big part to play in this still if we get going. And we did. And we showed great character. But I'm with you. There are, there are things to be worried about when it comes to our defending. I guess we are starting on more of the negatives there and there's so many positives to go through um no, the game started with a negative itself exactly well, didn't shut down well, <laughs> go on jordan no, i was gonna say i mean I, i've got some negatives so i'll say them to, to later on because i'm the negative one but i think but we're I doing think, it now aren't we well I mean, we, can, we can do it now but I, I i personally think that before we get into the actual game itself you turkish you were there and leave let you were there i'm just keen to hear from you two, and I've never thought I'd say these words in my life. I want to hear more from Lee. I want to hear about the atmosphere and the vibe because I thought you two I, were best I, friends I, now. Well, yeah, 
sort of uh, shot. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, he's one of them, <laughs> he's a keyboard warrior. Like, to be face, it's all, oh, I love you, Lee. And then when he gets fairly old keyboard, like, H, H. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think I just think we should hear first we'll talk about the app. Don't do that again, and, mate. Uh, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> um you I, I heard that people were there for like an hour inside the ground after the final whistle. I heard everyone supporting the team. I was very critical of the fan base at Man City when we went two one down. But at two nil, I heard the fan base saying, oh, come on Arsenal, come on Arsenal. I would just love to hear from you two. First of all, being there, what it was like, because it felt like it was one of the best nights of, of, of the Emirates era. Uh, well, it was just unbelievable. Like, you know, the one good thing about today, walking around, like I've been walking out um, and I played football today, you know the Arsenal fans and you know the Spurs fans. Like, you know what I mean, every, every Arsenal fan has just got a big cheesy grin on their face, whatever they're doing. <laughs> Even went into Brookfield Farm, like the old Tesco, to get a, a coffee and a bit of shopping, like... And and the pe the, the blokes that are being dragged around by their wives for the old shopping, you can tell the ones with a grin on their face. You know, what I mean? they don't care. They don't care. They're, they're the old shopping, they're all happy. But it was. I tell you what, like I, I, I've said this before today, and I'll say it again. The pivotal moment for me. Um, I was a but not to say I was a losing it. I, I was I was about to turn go. You know, you know, I was weren't happy with the. I kept it very quiet to myself. I'm going to be honest about team selection. I, I weren't happy with the team selection, changing, uh, dropping Same. Ben White. I weren't happy Same. with it. But anyway, that was another thing. But I kept, I kept me, um, I kept it quiet because uh, you know you, you don't want to criticise. I was about to lose it when we, I think we might have been two 0 down or something like that. Uh, it might have been one nil, two nil. I can't remember what time it was, but there was a pivotal moment when Shinchenko. And Ulegaard got the crowd up. Now, probably on TV, and that you wouldn't have seen that. Like they started, I did notice up, one, yeah, rousing it up, rousing it up, and it made me think, like, yeah, all right, they want they, they they want us to 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 be a part of it, and and instead of losing it and then going negative, I, I said, right, whatever happens now, I'm going to support and just cheer and cheer, and whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean, like, and I think that's I've never seen that from a from, at the Emirates era players doing that, and I, I felt, you know, like the players they they want us to be involved, that they appreciate what we're doing and everything like that. So that was a big, big thing for me. The, when the goal went in uh, to make it three two, it, you know, like as soon as they kicked off, it finished. You knew it was finished anyway. You knew it was done. Mm. I have not seen the Emirates packed like that for. Must have been half hour. Mm, Must have been half hour. Yeah. Uh, you know, like normally they're they're rushing you out to try and get you out. Do you know what I mean? Like no one was ushering anybody out. It, it was just a feel good vibe. Even like you know the stewards and all that were getting involved and everything like that. Then um, I looked out the window where the Tony Adams stand was and everything that like, where they do the filming and everything like that. The place where there must have been a thousand people mm. down there, like singing and dancing. So, so what was so what happened was they took it from the from the inside the stadium, outside the stadium. So on the concourses and all that, no one wanted to go on, you know. And the ironic thing is, if you left at two two because you want to get the early train, if you'd have left at like uh, after the game straight away, you'd have got on the train easy, like because everybody was still there celebrating. It was unbelievable. I've not seen nothing like it for a very, very long while. That place at the moment, the Emirates, has got to be the, the, the most vocal um, ground in England. I don't care what anybody says. It, it's buzzing. Even at 1-0 down, you know, like, I hadn't even got to my seat, Jordan. I, I, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, and we were 1-0 down. But I'm... I'm the atmosphere that no one give up, like you know, and, and and I think that that's you know, when the players involve you in that, how can you start saying, Right, I've had enough, I'm not going to support this team and everything like that? So it's just, it was like, We need you, and, and, and I, I, I loved it, you know. What can, I mean? can, 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 ask, can I ask all three of you, you know, well, Beck winner in the 91st minute against Leicester, mm. Henri return against Leeds um, in, the, in the FA Cup. Even United this season, you could argue, you know, in Ketia in the in the in the in dying, the dying minutes. Where does Saturday rank? Barcelona, one. Emir Barcelona as well. Sorry, yeah, as well. Where does Saturday for you guys rank in Emirates' greatest moments? I'd I'd, I'd put it with with the Welbeck one because they both made me feel like we can actually go on and win this league. Mm. 
Mm. Um, for me, it was better than Welbeck purely because it was 2 0 down, not 1 0 down. I think, I think the Welbeck things that we did against Leicester, who are the league leaders, and it felt like a, a crunch game. But I think to prove that we can come back from 2 0 down, like almost. I don't know if you guys ever do this, but as it got to the last minute or two, while I actually still felt, you know, we've got a chance here, I don't know, your brain just starts to go, well, you know, if it is a point, like at least we pulled it back from 2-0 down or mm. something. But to go on and get the winner was just, you know, what a strike. I know we've got yeah. something to talk about, but yeah, no, it's it, yeah, it, better than Welbeck's just. Uh, on the flip side to what Lee said, sorry, just to kind of answer Lee Gordon's previous question. When we went 1-0 down, yeah, and I'm going to talk about how we went 1-0 down in a second as well, because I don't ever want to see that again. I'm going to be honest with you. It, 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 we got we got roped in and, and, and done over by a, a boom of tactic that really we shouldn't be falling for. But when we went 1-0 down and, you know, a few minutes after we created a couple of chances, Odegaard had the shot where Saka got the rebound and probably should have scored, but the keeper, you know, stood tall and, and managed, to, managed to save it. We wasn't really, you know, creating shots on target. We wasn't really creating open opportunities. And it was two, three times. I think it was Odegaard, a couple. I think Zinchenko, maybe one of them, where they'd done that whole, like, you know, rallying the crowd up. And I kind of felt opposite to how Lee felt with that because I'm just looking at it like, listen, I, this is Bournemouth at home. Give us something to kind of, you know, you know, to get, to get us up again. Because the way you started that game is unacceptable. And after the first few chances created, I just thought, you're not you're not doing much. And Trossard going off injured, I just thought, it's all good and well turning to the crowd and, and, and you know, making out that it was quite flat. And I'll be honest, it was quite flat, you know, in the beginning because of the way we went down 1-0 and whatnot. But this is Bournemouth. At the end of the day, the, the Emirates and the away fans really have been a 12th man more often than not for Arsenal, not just this season, but last season too. We don't, you know, when I say we, I'm talking about the fans that did kind of quieten down a bit after that first goal. We wanted to see something. We wanted to see a, an immediate response to how we went 1-0 down. And really and truly, we didn't see that. And it was quite frustrating because it was just, you know, this was meant to be a an easy game for us. This was meant to be a game where we get the first goal, we roll over them and we... we was you on the lash? Difference. Huh? Was you on the lash? Was you on the drink? <laughs> Like, like, I, thought we respond, I thought we responded well. Oligard made a great sh a shot and a save and probably second should have got the rebound. Well, four minutes you know? in and there was nothing after that. What, 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 what did know, the Bournemouth team have to do after that? Like, you know, listen, I, I think it's a... I get what you're saying. I think it's a referring theme with uh, Arsenal at the moment. That, you know, create too many chances being created against us. You know what I mean? I'm going to say it now. Ramsdale's... I didn't even see the second one until I watched it on TV. I didn't even... Because we went 2-2. Two, two, and I was in the in the yeah. fury of the game. I didn't even see that save. You know what I mean? Like, but he's made two two world class saves in that game. You shouldn't be yeah. done. You know, with the the percentage of play we shouldn't have had. You know, it was um, it is poor. But oh no, I think like um, going back to it, that I think with the Danny uh, Danny Welbeck one, I think it's fantastic because and if you was a fan in that block when all the players jump in, I think that always been the most memorable. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, <clears> and, the, and and they were the league leaders, Lee. Bournemouth they were the league, league leaders, but, but I never believe. But this this one, I felt better for me because I believe we've got a better squad. I never believed in that squad. I know I know that sounds silly. I, it was like, you know, there was chinks in the armory. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if anything <clears> happened yeah. to Cockerland at that time, I think it did at West Brom, didn't it? A bit, a couple of yeah. games yeah. later, and, and we ended up. I, I I felt we was one injury away from disaster, and you know that's what happened. But with this squad, I do feel it's a bit better. Uh, even though now we haven't got a striker in the club, a fit striker, all three down now, like, you know, um, unbelievably. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, you know, I, I felt that the um, the atmosphere was great great in there. And uh, um, the bar, I, I just think this one means more because I just, because it's here and now. You know what I mean? Like, all those other ones were great at the time, but they they, they ended up meaning nothing. This can I um? Be the greatest one. Can I give my last? Because after this, I promise I'll be all positive. Because by the way, I was buzzing. I was out last night. I was, and I was just oh, chatting oh, to. Gosh. I was just chatting to the Arsenal fans. All it was at the house party, and I was just I was quite rude. All I did was watch the highlights of the Arsenal fans that were there. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just basking in it. It was amazing. But I, I do have one slight negative 
and they and actually i'm going to agree with turkish on the whole trying to lift the crowd thing i noticed that now now i will say i'll go back on this if it turns out that that was at two nil down i'll change my mind. but i think it came at one nil down as turkish said yeah and I, I'm a little bit with you, but in a slightly different way. Not so much like show us something, but I don't know if you guys caught the overlap. Robbie was on it. He was on it with James McNicholas, and they were talking about Arsenal being quite an emotional team. And I kind of looked at that. I, I kind of had a similar thing of like, guys, <laughs> like, you know, you're one nil down to Bournemouth. You know, we don't need all this. <laughs> like, and, and, and by the way, like, I, like, I, I kind of get it because. What you want is the reaction that Lee gave, which is, yeah, I'm behind you no matter what. So if even 10% of the crowd felt that way, then then it had its desired effect and fine. But I was left a little bit like, what are we getting all like what are we getting all emotional about? What are we getting going all crazy for here? Like it's one nil. Great chances, you'll get a few goals in this. I, and that was the thing that frustrated me. Had it been two nil, I'd have been like, look, I get it, you're trying to now draw on everything. But that just felt like that second goal came in like the 55th minute, 58th, whatever it was. Like, you know, there's ages to go. Um, and that's actually why. And I'm going to be consistent with this. That's why we went 2-0 down. Obviously, I didn't panic. I mean, I was a bit like, oh, my God, we're 2-0 down to Bournemouth. But I was like, there's chances in this. Like, we'll, we'll, we will create chances. Bournemouth will drop deeper and deeper. We've got players that can do something. Whether we win it, I don't know. But, yeah, I, I agree. That's my only other negative. I just thought... It didn't need to be such an occasion. I mean, in the end, now it's one for the history books, so and we'll always remember that Nelson goal and the comeback and all that, and it's great. But it didn't really need to be so early in the game. So I'm with you, Turkish, in, in a lot of that. But what I will say this, and and and, and it, it does frustrate me a little bit when people go to only Bournemouth, right, uh, and and things like that. I remember Manchester City were going for the league against QPR. Yeah. Um, down at the bottom of the league, like you know, and. They're, they're, they're losing that game with two minutes to go and, and, and look what happened there like you know these games happen these these the, there's no mugs in this league you know what I mean Lee, like, I, I agree but but the players so, and I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you but I don't mean it's only Bournemouth like they're 19th we should be destroying them I, I, I waxed lyrical about Bournemouth yesterday throughout the game and after um, and, and I and I actually hmm. warned everyone I said on this podcast you did say you said it in the start they haven't been actually conceding that many goals the last five games their, their results aren't that bad so I've yeah. got the utmost of respect it's the reaction and it's the whole like doing the most when it's hold on but if you just focus and just do the things you can do, you'll win this. We don't need that. Like Man United, 2-2, it's been an up and down crazy game. I get it. I just didn't feel this needed it till we went 2-0 down and then I kind of get it. That That's what I'm saying. And, and, and my my biggest beef is, is Arteta for this because of what he'd done with the team team lineup. Because I think that's that sets out a mentality. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, well, I can rest a few players in this game because it's Bournemouth. And that's what the sort of reaction you get from it, like, you know, play your strongest team, but have that belief in it, like, you know. I will say this with Arteta, as much as I was annoyed with him, wow, yeah. what a response, you know what I mean, like, a, and a masterclass of substitutions, fantastic, you know what I mean, got to tip me out to him and all that, like, you know. And listen, I, I, I'm, I'm totally in a, I agree with you, with everything you say, like, it, we cannot, and I mean this sincerely, we cannot continue to do what we're doing because we won't get away with it. We got away with it because probably it is Bournemouth, you know what I mean? Like, but if that is a top side, a top side, I mean, like, you know, we ain't coming back from two goals down. If we give away two goals to to a Liverpool or a Manchester United, that we ain't coming back from it, like, you know, we've got to get out this sloppiness in our play, and it is sloppiness because, like, our defending at time. I wouldn't swap one of our defenders. I, I love them all; they're all great, but that we are leaking goals too sim too easy. So it's something that Arteta has got to address because it's not, oh, he's not good enough, so we'll replace him and all that. They're all good enough. They're all very, very good defenders. I wouldn't, as I say, like, if you're going to say, which which one would you swap? You wouldn't swap any. But I am telling you this now, we are, we will win this league if we, we, we get it right at home. If we get it right at home, we will win this league. But I I, I think that's my, my biggest fear, is those sort of games. That is my biggest fear because we're conceding too many openings. Ramsdale, even against uh, Everton, they ran us, you know, a few chances. Ramsdale's make bit is too busy for the percentage of play teams are getting against us. Yeah, End yeah. of negativity. I mean, uh, to be honest, I have to disagree with you on the lineup thing because who was it? Vieira in for Xhaka and Tommy Asu in for Ben White. 
I look there as you know, it's still confident about the lineup and and getting the job. Why Ben White no Turkish? Why keep why why keep leaving him out? Why not bring in Shinjing? Uh, bring in um, uh, Tierney. You know, Tommy Tommy Asu's last start, he gave away a goal against Man City. What's the desperation to keep giving Ben White out of the team? I don't understand it. He's been our best player and he proved it again when he came on. I actually think that's fair. It, I actually think the Tommy Asu White one bothers me the least. I, I think the Vieira Jacques one, I will admit to quite a bit of hindsight here, but you know, Xhaka, yes, he's been getting forward and we've been sort of talking about that new role he plays, but he also really drops deep and tucks in next to party. He does he is a, a, a classic box of box. He has to impact both areas of the pitch. With Vieira, you're basically saying, we're happy to have another Odegaard. We're happy to have another creator. But that leaves Partey pretty exposed. I don't actually think any of the goals really came from that, but that's where you kind of realise, actually, mm. Vieira can really compete to be one of the creative players in that team. But we need depth in the summer and have a more like-for-like Xhaka -like or a more creative box to box or some someone. You know what I mean? Like when you look at it, it doesn't feel particularly balanced, Vieira, the Garden Parte. I get you. I, you know what? I, it, I get you, but the way we started that game, I can't put down to Tommy Esu and I can't put down to Vieira. Yeah, we, you're right. No, 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 I agree. I agree. We just switched off. And when you go a goal down mentally, you're probably thinking about shit, you know, we have to come back into this from the get go and then you know Bournemouth are gonna try and stifle us and and it, the, the first half, in my opinion, didn't work out the way it should have. But, Lee, you're right to, to bring Ramsdale's name up. And I, in terms of the positive aspects of the game and the, and the positive performances, I want to start with Ramsdale because I remember against Aston Villa at 2-2, he made a save onto the yeah. crossbar to keep it at 2-2. And, you know, we went on to, to win that game 4-2 in injury time, last minute winners there as well. And again, against Bournemouth at 1-0, Bournemouth created the, the, the next best chance in, in the first half and he made a great save, literally one-on-one, -on -one point blank. Um, and at 2-1, and that's the one you're talking about, Lee, that you said you missed, Solanke, where it was, yeah. from a tight, it was from a tight angle and it didn't look like he could really cause any problems, but he done well. He kept the shot low, it was going in and Ramsey had to get a leg out and, and, and keep it at 2-1. And when you look back at those two saves and, and when those two saves came, it, they, they they were really really big saves in my opinion. Uh, yeah. you know, it kept us in the game. So, you know, we often talk about goalkeepers when they make mistakes or the, or, or they're not you know um, switched on at points, especially when you're dominating possession and dominating you know the the, the game. But Ramsdale's Ramsdale deserves a lot of credit in recent weeks yeah. for some of the saves he's made. Yeah, agreed. Jordan. I love him. I, he looks more focused. Yeah. You're unusually quiet, Jordan, man. What's going on? Yo, no, no, I'm just listening to you guys. I'm I'm just interested um and in taking it all in. Um, I'm not giving my negatives, by the way. So I want to give my negatives, which are pretty much the same as what's been highlighted already. First thing, I've often said to my friends that know me, if I was ever a football manager, there's, there's probably more than two, but there's two things that for me, an instant one month, no, sorry, one week fine. Two things. Foul throws. Anybody on my team foul throws, week fine. No Dirty no boots. pay for a week. Who? Dirty boots? No, 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 not that, <laughs> not that bad. Not that bad. Foul throws, and any of my teams can see the goal in the first five minutes. If you let in a goal in the first five minutes, that says to me you're not ready. You're not prepared. I think it's embarrassing. I know a lot of people have been waxing lyrical about how tactically, you know, smart it was. No, it's no, embarrassing. No, no, no. It's embarrassing. It is really, really bad. And it's not like... It was a punt forward and then a volley from 25 yards. They've passed past down the line. The, the, oh, the defender is so comical. It's so, so bad. Um, mm. they, they're all getting fined. The whole team's getting fined if I'm in charge. Second. So they, they Imagine are, announcing that after Nelson's goal. Five minutes. <laughs> By the way. Fuck, a any goal in five minutes, you're not ready. Second thing. I'm with Lee on this one. I don't. I can't stand this rotating looking at games in the future. I just can't stand it. Pick your best team. We've got away with it because it's Bournemouth. Unless Ben White was injured, unless Jack has got a knock, play your best team. Play your best team. Go 4-0 up and then make subs. I just hate it. I think Arteta, as Lee said as well, redeemed himself with the subs, but I think he put us in a position with the 11 that he picked from the get-go that he didn't need to. Pick your best team. Stop playing games. Bournemouth are bottom of the league or second bottom. But they can still do a team. 
as they approved. Stop playing games. And my third negative was going to be again. You might, well, you might as well forget about the subs bench then. You might as well forget about it. Tell them to, 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 to forget about it. What do you mean? What do you mean? How, how do you keep how do you keep the fringe players happy and uh, and on job and, and not only that, how do you keep them match fit in a sense without giving them chances? There was FA Cups and League Cups for that Turkish. There's 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 the Europa League for Europa that. Europa well. League. Yeah. So I'm saying who's, who's the more difficult opposition, sport in Lisbon or Bournemouth? Bournemouth. No. Bournemouth. Because Bournemouth, because Bournemouth are are an opponent, are, are in, in a are an opponent in a competition that we all prioritise. And also, Bournemouth is the next game. That's my, the next game. My problem with prioritising is, listen, the league is far from over. I know it's 12 games there if the end is in mm-hmm. sight. Mm-hmm. We've got massive away games to come. Mm-hmm. You know, you put all your eggs in one basket, you, 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 come end of the season, you might have nothing. And to have nothing after the season we've had, would you yeah. know would be so would be so frustrating. But, but but Turkish the Europa League is a cup competition as well. It only takes one bad refereeing decision and you're out. You haven't got to play bad. You could be out and then that's done. At least oh, the I league, don't... there's a time to recover, chance to recover if you mess up. And I don't want to win the Europa League at the expense of the Premier League. No, that's sorry, what Turkish you know is saying. Right. If you could that's ask if you ask me, I'd pick it. Sorry, Jim Gunn. No, but because I'll tell you what, he left Shaka out. He left Shaka out, right? I'm not sure about this Ben White thing. I don't know why he, why he done it. He done it against Man City. I don't understand. Something's going it. on there. Something's going on there. I don't understand it. But he brought him on like the other on that, and he and he was fantastic. He also links up really well with Saka, which is something that I don't understand why why you want to bring in Tommy Asu for that game. Bring in Tommy Asu against um, uh, um, Sport in Lisbon. He left Shaka out yesterday because he's thinking. I'm sure. I'm sure you're going to be seeing Granite Shaka. Playing on Thursday night now, like you know, yeah. so that could have cost us for three points for the Europa League. That's my big fear. I don't care who he plays on on Thursday. You know, what I mean, I, I'm 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 hoping that Saka doesn't even go. Let I, I think he'll go travel, but I don't want him playing. I don't want none of it. You know, what I mean, I, I, that we could have lost that game yesterday. Like we got away, we got away with it. Fair play to him, like you know what I mean. But he still had to bring Shaka on. He's brought Ben White on at half time. In, in recent uh, weeks, we've been talking about Shaka's level of performance and saying he hasn't really hit the heights that he hit going into the World Cup. So it it, it was a change that I didn't really mind much. But ben the White, thing is, Ben White's one, I get you. But even on that front, I think we've all seen Tommy Asu start games before, and we've all been happy with Tommy Asu too. It's not like he's. I haven't been Turkish. I'm going to be really honest. I haven't been happy with him. I wasn't happy with him in the yeah, not in the recent. Wait, okay, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll, go, I'll go along with that. But why Why are you... I don't want to start getting around. This is for another time. Why is there this desperation to play Tomiyasu but not Tierney? Because of what Zinchenko offers, whereas Tomiyasu can offer a, a, a more similar... Um, why have been our best defender this season? No, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you, but I mean, in terms of playing style, Tomiyasu is a lot closer to Ben White than Tierney is to Zinchenko. Yeah, well, I get that. Okay, yeah, but... if if there's a tactical reason why he's play, he's replaced Xhaka and Ben White with with uh, Vieira and Tomiyasu, then fine. I'm just not sure there was. I think he had half a night on Sporting, and I yeah. want to win the Europa League as well. But what I'm saying is, is that I think it could have cost us. And I think I don't think we have the luxury of, of City, for example, where they can rotate because they've got two internationals in every position. We're trying to get to City's level, whereby when you make changes, you still expect a high level. I'm still not convinced about Vieira. I'll just say it from the get go. I'm not. I, I I like him. I'm not convinced about him yet. So I, I'll, I'll put that on the on on the on the on the table from now. But my third complaint was going to be about this, the goals we're letting in, which you the point you made. We're letting in way too many goals at the Emirates. Way too many goals. How are Bournemouth scoring two goals and should have scored more? That save yeah. that Lee's talking about that, that, that Ramsdale's made, it's a great save. It's also a bad miss. It's a bad miss. If it's that's one of that. my strikers, the first one, yeah. I'm like. How the hell have you not scored that? And if they go 2-0 up at that point, I know it was earlier than the second goal, they did score in the end, but I don't know what that does. But anyway, but those are my negatives. My brief positives were going to be Reese Nelson. That strike strike from Reese Nelson is he's arrowed it and struck it. I don't think he can strike it any sweeter. I don't I think if he hits it any any better, it it, it almost goes wide or or, or over. (coughs) Look at the goal from the, there's an angle from the back. 
there's literally a, um, a route yeah. where it's gone. It's the only any bit to the left or to the right it hits a player. Yeah, it's it's, it's perfect. And the two I think it's Premier League goal that, of the season. Uh, possibly, B possibly because 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 of one thing he did, which I didn't realize until my fiftieth time watching. And he flicks it from his right foot to his left foot. Yes, yes, yes. That yes, is the yes, most yes. audacious bit of skill. He doesn't just chest it down. Because I thought he chest and walloped it. And actually, it, when you do that playing football, that's actually on the half volley. It's actually a very nice technique. You can actually make good connection from a chest and, and, and a half volley bouncing ball. It's the fact that it, the chest has come down, but he knows I can only hit this if, it, if it's on my left. He could have just swung a foot at it and hoped something would happen. Yeah, they went, no, this is crack like yeah, foot. Yeah. And he's not got the time to do it. It's bam, flick, hit on his left. And oh, look at real. And when Unreal. he scores when he scores that goal, he's the coolest person when he goes in. Look at he everyone around him. He, he, he's yeah. so calm. Everyone's losing their head. He's just like, this is what I do. This is what yeah. I do. Relax. Yeah. Look at the three corners before that corner as well. He's in the exact same position. Same, same position, yeah. He's in the By exact the same. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a fluke. He was that's that's been worked on. So he's the first positive. The comeback, another positive as well. Um, and the final positive. I think, I think we should delve a bit more. Go into on, go on, go on. Yeah, let's get no. Just chase about Reese Nelson, and, and people on. are forgetting this, right? Forget about his goal and everything. He has been left out of the squad for the last two games. The and people. People question Arsenal's mentality and crumble and they're going to do this and do that. The mentality of him to be left out of two games, mm -hmm. right? He's only in the team, by the way. He's only in the squad, should I say, because Eddie's injured. Mm. He comes in and he produces 20 minutes of that. Yeah. My God, mentality-wise, he's got it right up. I, 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 I heard he changed the game. When he came on, I heard it. He Unbelievable. The he's brilliant. He yeah, get the goal. He, he would uh, when he came on. Uh, yeah. People that I know were there said that his impact changed yeah. the game yeah. in a weird way. In a very very weird way, the goal will do a disservice to his performance because okay. he will be remembered as oh goal. he came on, he scored that goal. Therefore, and listen, that's all he'll want. But you, yeah, the, the the whole performance. There was um, and this isn't a negative. I mean, I'm mentioning a negative, but to be positive. Uh, I thought one of our biggest issues um, up to when, before Nick Reece Nelson came on, I thought was decision-making and execution. Two pretty big things in football, funnily enough. Odegaard <laughs> was shooting when he should have been passing. Mm -hmm. He was passing when he should have been shooting. When he was shooting, he wasn't really connecting with it properly. Nothing was really... Martinelli's finishing was poor on the day. Everything everyone tried didn't quite come off. The error looked bright at times, but it didn't quite happen for him. There's lots of that going on. Reece Nelson came on. When he took a man on, he beat him. When he crossed the ball, it found someone. Yeah. When it wasn't on, he cut back inside and he passed it back. That corner comes from Reese Nelson keeping the ball in play from a switch and rolling it back to Zinchenko. Yeah. Anyone could have panicked and just gone, all right, I've got to drive inside, I've got to do something. He went, oh, Zinchenko's there. Let me, let me just roll it back to him. Every single decision he made was spot on and was executed perfectly. And his, his celebration summed up his whole cameo, calmest, coolest head on the pitch. Um, and, and, and I don't want to take from other players because I thought every player stepped up, actually, in that last half hour when we needed them. Partey made up for his mistake with, with that goal. Smith Rowe even wins the header for the assist. Yeah. He then comes off. Saka didn't stop trying. Odegaard, for his poor execution, didn't stop trying. Uh, I said Partey's immense. Little two centre-backs, yes, can see a lot of chances, but wow, they had so much work to do just to allow everyone else to attack. Um, but yeah, Reese Nelson, his cameo was I, ten, one, one, ten of, out one, ten. one yeah. of the things that really James impressed me about the team is I love this. If you look at the team, two nil down, even two one down, it'd have been easy to start lumping balls into the box. Yeah. I love the fact that even when we're not winning, we are still to the to the last second, literally, <laughs> we are playing our football. Now there'll be times when we draw that game 2-2 two, two, or we lose the game 2-1 and people will be saying, why are they still passing the ball? Lump it in! Just get yeah. it in! Cross the ball! They'll be saying that. and, and yeah. we, we, We've got so to balance that. Yeah, yeah, of course you will. But I actually like the fact that the team are like, no, 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 no. We, this is how we play football. This is an Arteta team and this is how we're going to play. We're going to live and die by playing this way. There was no 60-yard diags. 
just pumping it in. We played football, and I love that. Also, it's not like me to call up referees. We should have had one penalty as well. The Gabriel uh, oh, yes. header. Um, I thought the other two were penalties, but the Gabriel one, um, where he heads it onto the guy's hand, that's a penalty for me. But that's so fascinating because that was the one I was least convinced about because I yeah, thought yeah. I thought he's kind of like there. He's just kind of whatever. I thought the the, the one. one where he goes to head it and it hits his elbow yeah. because he misses it. That's Blind a pen. Penalty. The Tomiyasu kick on the ankle, that's a pen. And then the one when he sticks an arm out from Saka's cross well. and it hits a post. Oh, yeah, that one, yeah. They're just, they're, they are disallowing a goal if a striker scores like that. So it's a pen. Like, Interesting. Yeah. But 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 um, while I know VAR is a different thing to goal line technology, I will big up technology in football because it's what granted us, the, it's what gave us the equaliser, essentially. Goal and, can, and can I say something Good about, that the referee, about the referee? I thought we refereed that game superbly well yesterday. I I, 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 I know that VAR comes into yeah. it and all that, like, but I thought we refereed it really, really well. And the greatest thing that he done was, I because we was mentioning, I don't know if you noticed it, but one of their players on the 90th minute was rubbing his back, like, you know what I mean? As soon as the yeah. six... He was as soon as the six minutes come up, yep. he went down. He went down, knowing thinking, right, okay, I can waste a couple of minutes here. And that minute that he was laying on, he added on. And that yeah. is Lee, you're, you're so right to bring that up. Teams are gonna realize now there's no point time wasting against Arsenal. There's no point. The villa game, they time wasted. Look what happens. Yeah. Saturday, yeah. There, was, there was another game as well that we won. The team time wasted. Man City did it as well and got away with it. But everyone Newcastle got away with it. We should have had a penalty in the very last minute of that game. Yeah, um, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure it was a penalty. But I, I, there's, there's teams now that I think the United think, time wasted. United, it was United. That was it. It was United. And teams have to realise there's no point time wasting now, especially against us. Because one, referees just adding it on, and second of all, we're gonna score. <laughs> we're gonna score. Last final positive as well, the amount of goals we're scoring from on the edge or outside the box. We've scored quite a few goals this season now from on the edge or outside the box. Yeah. And that, for me, is a, is a definite positive, an upgrade from the amount we were scoring the previous two seasons. That's great. I'm using that tactical insight as my own uh, insight. <laughs> Appreciate it, mate. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't want to go back into the negative, but you just mentioned, you know, teams learning. I don't think it's just Arsenal not to time waste game against. I think the whole plan from what we saw at the World Cup, mm. seeing, you know, in, in, in Premier League games as well, is to put off every team from time wasting because it's all it's sort of about, you know, keeping the ball in play and, and as much football as you can get out of the 90 minutes. But we've got to learn that these get out of jail free cards, and I don't mean if mm -hmm. we've had to work for these winners, but you mentioned it, United, Aston Villa, now Bournemouth. That's three last minute winners now we've, we've scored against these teams. And United, I'm going to look at it a bit differently because United top team in form, so I get that one. But Aston Villa and Bournemouth, you know, teams that all right, even Aston Villa, you can give it because we're coming off of our blip. Okay, I, mm -hmm. I'll give, I'll, I'll even give that one. But regardless, when you're going for a league title, you know, you get a handful of these games where you can grind it out and, and get a last minute winner. And you know, you might have deserved it, you might not have deserved it, but you got the three points. So who gives a shit? But moving forward now, I want us to, you know, it goes back to what you said, Jordan. Stop conceding goals at home, especially. We've got to stop. We've got to stop, Turkish. You, you switched on from the first whistle. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think Lee's point, again, is, 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 is brilliant. And he's, to be fair to Lee, he said this, said this pre-Christmas, for the amount of chances that we are, con for the amount of um, attacking threats opposition teams are having against us, they're having way too many chances within that. Way too many. Yeah. Teams, teams should be getting two chances against us, max. Yeah. Absolute max. Teams are getting five, six chances against us over a game. That is not a team that's going to win the title. If you win, teams that win titles, they control <clears throat> games. We've gone back to now this basketball rubbish. that You don't win titles that way. You just don't. And it's, uh, it's actually clouding how well Gabriel and Saliba are playing. Because, I mean, yes, don't get me wrong, there's errors. Like Saliba on Watkins. Like... Gabriel getting a touch on that cross in the ninth second of the game. Like, you know, don't get me wrong. Of course, if goals are conceded, centre-backs are having a part to play in some to some degree. But they are so exposed. They actually think Party does really well to get back and try and help. But generally, like, we're so open. They have so much work it's to do. It's not good and, enough. 
you know, but if I were to give Sabri uh, Sabriel, I quite like that. There you go, uh, Sabriel, there you print. go. Yeah. If I give Sabriel as a partnership, <laughs> um, I didn't mean that, but there we go. Um, a, a rating for that game. Or Galiba. Like, Look at this guy. <laughs> you know what? I'm happy to negotiate on that one. <laughs> um, I actually thought they played well in the game, but they just had so much work to do. And I know we conceded two goals. So that sounds ridiculous to say, but like I'm more mad at the whole team for that, like rather than those two. I, I think those they have so much work to do, not just off the ball, on the ball. How many times like Gabriel's left wing, <laughs> like just trying to progress the ball. Um, uh, credit to them. Can I can I just ask a question about Emil Smith Rowe? He came off with an injury, right? No, no, no. I was an injury. It was tactical. Yeah. Oh, okay, then move on. But I love that. Because, because, um, masterclass, masterclass, masterclass. Yeah. I mean, in, in Smith, Rowe, Vieira, and Zinchenko, you've got three players who want to do very similar things on that side of the pitch. He yeah. gave him what an hour, he got his assist, and, and then he said, I need pace, I, I need someone more direct. And he, and he went for Nelson. That was that was brilliant from Arteta. Yeah, that was a big move, a big move. Um, because they must be probably a fan favorite as well, and, and, and he had just got the assist, so. It was a big move and it was a, a move that got us to win in the end because, you know, we mentioned Reese's goal, haven't mentioned his assist. And he also had that ball to the back post for Odegaard where, you know, it, it struck the post yeah. as well. So he, he created a, he created two big chances. One of them was put away and he scored the winner as well. So for me, Reese was mad at the match, if I'm honest with you, coming off the bench. When yeah. He, the he had. But we talked about rotation. We talked about the sporting game coming up and 40 minutes in now, just over 40 minutes. And I want to move on to that one, unless someone else has got something to mention about Bournemouth. No, but I will just say one thing I did enjoy as well was Neto getting it from Ben White at the end. There were three things. Um, I'm doing a bit of a tie here. But <laughs> A was the random scrap he tried to get involved in in the first half when Arsenal played on with a Bournemouth player on the floor, even though Bournemouth had just tried to counter-attack yeah. with him. Uh, and, and then he comes running over. That was nonsense. Um, then the fact that he, I think, I might be wrong with this, but I think he told Adam Smith to go down. Like, it, in that 90th minute, 91st minute of the game. Anyway, and the third thing is that he seems to, I don't know if you've seen it, when the cross comes in for the winner, he seems to throw like a, a fist at Ben White? Have you seen it? Do the rounds yeah. on social media? Yeah, throws a punch at him, didn't he? He didn't throw it. He hit him. He actually connected. Okay, he, right. he, he, he gave him right. the back, didn't he? Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, ben White just thought, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this in front of you. Forget forget the 60,000 fans. Forget all, <laughs> all my colleagues and teammates and staff and run off over there. I want to celebrate this with you, my friend. Um, and I, I thought that was brilliant. Well done, Ben. Now, listen, I'll just leave you on a positive. You know, like it's a, it's a massive three three points. It was a massive last twenty minutes, and 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 all credit to the players. Um, I I think that you know, um, yeah, sometimes you've got to be criticised of defending and everything like that. But they've come back and done it again, and I think you know that I tip my hat to these these players for, for doing it. You know, uh, characters they, they might not get away with it in the part. In the, I, the quality of the goals was fantastic. Ben White's goal, by the way, it was a fantastic finish, and, yeah. and, and 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 as we've already mentioned, Nelson's goal was 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 fantastic as well. So, listen, for me, um, it, it was a great great day. Uh, I, I I don't I don't care anybody. You, you got your money's worth in that game and more. It was a fantastic game can of I, football. Can I just um, briefly end on a negative? So, so, sorry, Lee. No, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. So just just briefly, just just briefly. I, you just said it. You just said it there, James. As well, everyone's saying, "Oh, character, character, character." Not every comeback is about character. I don't think we won that game through character. I think we won that game because we have better players. We won that game. We've just got more talent than you, and we should be beating you. I think the Villa one was cup was character. I don't think character was what got us back in this game. I don't think every comeback is always Why? about what's character. The, what's the difference between the two? I'm curious. The difference between the two is if I've just got better weapons than you have. I should defeat you. I'm, yeah. I'm better than you. So it shouldn't be about my character is stronger or stro strong or stronger. I've just got better players. Uh, we came back because ultimately the quality is superior. I don't think I'll, it was about character. I will say this though. I will say this. And I, I think it's been a little bit overlooked. Is that at one stage there, we're 2-0 down with our three strikers all injured. 
i.e. Jesus, Eddie and Trossard. And we mm. still found a way to win. So I I am going to take the positives from it. Uh, that is a quality comeback considering because we could have felt sorry for ourselves, but we didn't. I think it is. Sorry, I know, I know we're really trying to move on to the next bit, but um, I, I think it is character. I, I think Arteta getting the 11 wrong, um, and you can tell that from being 2-0 down and being brave enough and losing Trossard in the first half I mean, brave enough to bring off Smith Rowe, he brought on. Partey responding to his two errors, can see in the first free kick and then not tracking the man on the on, on the corner to then pull us a goal back. I think Reese Nelson, who's not kicked a ball for the first team, I think since November, uh, in, in a competitive game. Uh, and that was again. He got injured, didn't Forest. he, in, in Dubai, didn't he? In the tournament. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, um, so, actually, I think it was October against Forest. I think that might have been the last time he played for the first team, unless he had some minutes after that in, in some cup competitions. But um, for him to come on and, and put in that performance, yeah, I, I, I think the fact that they all came through those moments, for me, for me, is character. Let's, let's, take, it out, let's take it outside, James, because you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't worry, he's a keyboard warrior. <laughs> Yeah, see so you and go hello, James. You're my favourite. You're, you're my favourite, James. I've, I've yeah. always loved you. Always <laughs> loved you. You look at you'll see me in the studio. That point about characters, fucking good, you know. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, we've just passed 45 minutes, so we are going to move on to sporting now. And I want to start off the sporting talk, considering we just talked about rotation and uh, and options and whatnot. Let's go around and well, I say go around. Let's 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 discuss the starting eleven first and foremost. Starting from goalkeeper all the way to the striker, and see what we agree on, what we don't agree on, and, and okay. how serious some of us are taking the. the My light's about to run out, Turkish, very soon. So can we come and do this really quickly? Because the light is about to. Are you plugging in? <laughs> I'm oh. joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Put ten p in, will you? Know, you know what I mean? <laughs> his girlfriend's house. There's lights, camera, there's everything. Like, you know, he's even got sound. Cup of tea, everything. Yeah, you know what I mean? like, he don't even bowl the kettle light. Like, you know I mean, like, I say, like, you know. I heard, I heard he goes and knocks on next door and says, Oh, shut up. Tea? Cup of hot water, please. <laughs> I was wondering what kind of smart light tells you the battery's running out. <laughs> well, it was bright early on and now it's, it's dimming. But anyway, it's, it's cool. And Wait till 30 seconds. Eh? That's why. <laughs> Plug it in as you go, mate. Plug so... it in as you go. I'm sure TalkSport can sort you out. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, <laughs> mate. Sorry. And, anyway, sorry. The team. The team. And the team. Let's start with goalkeeper. I don't know if there's going to be much of a debate here, but I, I'm going with Turner. Does anyone disagree with that? No. Oh, Jordan. Uh, knows it. Um, yeah, don't care. <laughs> you just pondered it for, for a couple of seconds. Then I'm, trying to, I'm, trying, I'm trying to work out if I really care about that, can if I that makes a, a difference. Question about that. Can I ask a question about that? You sure. can, Lee. Um, we all say Turner. Where if it comes to the final, and we got to the final, and, t and Turner's played every game, would you expect him to be in goal, or would you expect it to be Ramsdale? No, nope, Ramsdale. I think it depends who we have in the final, if I'm honest with you. Does it? I think if, if it's a team we should be beating, I'd, I'd stick with Turner. If it's a team where, you know, it might be it might be a sticky one, then I'd, I'd go with the first choice again. So if we got Man United in the next round, you'd expect Rams down and go? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, uh, cool. Yeah, I, I think it's it's nothing personal. It's, you know, this, this is a tougher game. We probably won't score as many goals. Therefore, we really must not concede as many. They're so, our best goalkeeper. So to that point, it's a good question, Lee. What does that then do for team spirit? Because we've all talked about how team spirit has played a massive part in what we've got so far. If the team start thinking that this guy's got us to the semi-final or to a final and the gaffer's dropped him out <clears throat> the minute we've got to the final, is that just... No, nah, they've got to get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 get, I get that to a degree, but they've just got to understand it. You're an Arsenal football club. like, Yeah. You know, yeah, you just... I'm sorry. You just have to swallow it. You would have no, still I, I, I agree, but I'm just, I'm just I, I agree. You have yeah. to swallow it. Yeah. Good, yeah. good point. Uh, right back. I'm going Tommy Yassi. Same. Same. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, same. Let's go straight to left back before we do centre back pairing. Left back. I'd, I'm going to go Tierney. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tierney. Oh, it seems like we're agreeing so far. Centre back it's partnership now. Um, I'm going Saliba and Kivio. Same. Uh, Same. Yes. Same. 
Yeah. Yeah, just quickly <laughs> explain that one. Um, for me, because I just really want to see Kivio, <laughs> which is slightly... Well, he's got to um, play, hasn't he? He's got to have some sort of games. Well, we put him for 20 million. You've got to think he's got some part to play. Yeah. Um, but Saliba, because while I actually think he's been improving recently, despite the, the goals conceded, I think he's been getting better and better, near back to his pre-World Cup best. I think he's the one of the two that needs the more game time to just keep mm-hmm. playing himself into form. Yeah, so Saliba. I'll agree so with that. So no Rob Holding in? Uh, oh me out. He's, he's, he's done well when need when asked. He has, but come on, come on. But it's not on. it's not like I want to see holding, whereas I want to see Kivio, and I'm not going Kivio and holding because that's that's a bit too much wholesale for me. If I'm honest, that's it. And, and by the way, Kivio's passing range. I don't know if you saw the, the the comps in the rounds. I mean, from from the res- I know it's the reserves game, but actually it doesn't matter. To see a passing range now, Jordan. Was he spraying it like Maldini from 30 yards and 40 years? You know, this is what well, I never saw I'm, Maldini, but yeah. I'm going You're to say Italian. That, I'm not, I wouldn't be too disappointed so? if Rob Holding is playing neither. Okay. Okay. Um, for me, that I haven't seen much of Kivio's compilations, but from what I've read about him and signed him and what I heard Arteta saying recently about the, the under-21 game that he played a part in, he seems like a passing, a progressing centre back. Where you know, where that's what Gabriel does for us in in the Saliba partnership. And um, that's not to say Saliba can't do that, but I think that partnership will be an interesting one to say the least. You, you got you got me thinking now, guys. I'm just thinking: is it a little bit arrogant of us to think that we could put in our new signing for a game that's quite important before Rob Holding, who all right, he's not bloody Beckenbau, but when he's come in, he's done a good job. And you, do you not want to get a lead or win the first leg first and then start phasing Kivior in? Is that a little bit arrogant of us to just assume that he could make his debut in you what know, is quite a big game? A lot of it comes down to, for me, in January, I didn't expect to be going for a centre-back, let alone mm. spending £20 million on the centre-back. So yeah. for us to spend that money in it January... Must have, it must be of a level. When it was you know quite down the priority list for me at that time, don't get me wrong, we needed someone behind Gabriel, but... I didn't believe that was the 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 target position for the January window. Twenty I think million. It was as, as necessary as another position. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, like, listen, and also you, not being horrible, we signed him in January. We're in March now. Mm-hmm. He's got to play. Yeah, and, and, then, I, I, and I'll tell you what. That's what we bought this player oh, for so that, to, to play. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> 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 Bear with me a minute. Hang on. Oh no, you take your time, son. You take your time. <laughs> But like, yeah, I, I think that like, you know we, we bought these players to 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 use in the in the Europa League to give players a rest. So I'm I'm all for it. Like yeah, cool. Um, we'll do the midfield as a three. Um, since we're agreeing so much, I'm, I'm hoping we agree on this one as well. Midfield three for me: Jorginho, Xhaka, Vieira. Yes, mine as well. Lee. Yeah, the only thing that I'm a little bit worried about that is in when we what you're going to do for your front three. Interesting, because yeah, they're, 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 they're well. Do we have any updates? Does that mean updates? you're going to play Martinelli or is there any updates on Eddie? Huh? Is there any updates on Eddie at the moment? Well, I don't think uh, he'd be fit. And what about Trossard? I have a sneaky feeling they might both be fine. You know? No, nah, he's got a muscle problem. Yeah, it was a grain apparently, isn't it? Trossard. I can't see him being back for a, a, for oh. a couple of weeks. Oh, see, so my so my, my my theory is that I'm I'm happy with that, but I don't really want to see Saka or Martinelli playing on Thursday. But one of them's going to have to if you play that that role. Play and that Martinelli role. right and Ketia up front, Smith Rowe left. Tierney overlaps, so that kind of helps the whole width thing. <clears throat> Well, Reese Nelson just got mad at the match, you know, not even putting him in the in the right side. Oh, that's mad. I completely forgot. Yeah. Yeah, that shows yeah. you how, that match a, what, a 10 out of 10 cameo, he says. <laughs> he's back on the bench. And, uh, he's back on the bench. Can I tell you something, right? I want to own that one because when I was doing, when um, deadline day happened and I, I put together our squad, like of every player in every position, um, and I sort of asked people, what do we think? This is the team that's going to Hopefully, you get us through to the end. I didn't have Reese Nelson in that in that group, and I, I really, and it's, it's bad of me, but I just, 
I just didn't consider, like, I didn't think of him as like a, a regular part of the squad that I was going to be turned to because of A, a lot of the options we had there, uh, B, the fact that we barely see him and injuries. So even, yeah, even with that unbelievable cameo, it's, it's taken me a second to, and we're recording this at midnight, um, but it's taken me a second to actually just sort of like remember that he's going to play a real part and he's a real option for us. So my bad. Uh, let's just confirm that the midfield three. So I've got Jorginho, Xhaka and Vieira. James has agreed. Lee has slightly agreed, but he's weary of the front three, which we're going to get into. Jordan? Jorginho, I, no, I, I, I agree. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, that's cool. Um, now, if Eddie's fit, then that, 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 I'm happy with that. Now, the front three. Um, for me, it'd probably be... I want Saka to have a rest, but at the same time, he just seems like a machine. He just plays every game and just bounces back and he's ready for the next one. But I'm going to say Reese on the left, Saka on the right and Eddie up top. What about Mart? What about Smith Rowe? I don't know. I don't know if he's if he's fully there yet. Well, I, I think Smith Rowe needs to play for minutes for, for longer in the future. And I'm I'm going to rest Saka. And I'll tell you why I'm going to rest Saka. And I'm going to, if it comes to, push comes to crunch, I'm going to go Martinelli because Martinelli will get an international break rest because he's not been put in the Brazilian side where Saka is off to England. So mm. I, I think that I don't want to see Martinelli really because he's our only option up front and I don't want to be going to Fulham without him. It's a real real dilemma for me, like, you know what I mean? Because what I want these players, I want Saka Martinelli fit for, for Fulham. So I'm a bit <coughs> wary of this one here. I'm just hoping Eddie's fit. Eddie, Nelson yeah. and Smith-Rowe would be my three. Assuming that Eddie's not fit, um, I'm I'm not overly convinced by Martinelli down the middle. I've never been a big fan of him down the middle, um, but he might have to play down the middle against mm. Fulham. So maybe giving him a run down the middle against against Sporting kind of makes sense. Um, I, I I would go uh, Smith Rowe and and um, Reese on the on the wings either side of of, of Martinelli. <clears throat> Change my mind again. <laughs> I've agreed with all three of yours and you're all different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. To sum up, I'm going for Eddie up front, Nelson right, Smith row left. Okay. And it we just needed to not like I'm not I'm obviously not saying this is okay, but if we lose two one it can be turned around, right? I, I mean yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not I'm not building you know, I don't need to go out there and blow them away. Just bring but, them back. Bring them back with a tire live still. That's, that's all we've got to do. So you've agreed with Jordan's front three then? That's that's, that's no, I, I did. I, mine was with Martin Eddie. Eddie's not fit. Oh yeah, so it's 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 Lee's front three. Sorry. Yeah, Eddie. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, but if Eddie's not fit, then it's got to be Martin Eli. I'm, I'm yeah. with, with Jordan. I'm not happy of it, but it's all, so, because of these bloody injuries. Now a couple of the big guns got, have got to play, whether it be Udegaard or Vier. You know, like. Vieira could go up if, if if you're playing Odegaard, then Vieira can go to the flank. Uh, I will Maybe say, like though, Smith Rowe is the the false nine. You know, that's something you could do. I don't, I don't. For all I've said about, look, keep the tie alive and let's not, you know, priority on the league and all that. You know, I don't want to see Arsenal and the players are out there. You know, look a shambles on the pitch just because we've rotated in some positions. Matt Turner, mm. USA Internationals, look good when he's coming. Tommy Asutini were our starting fullbacks last year. And we've called for one of the two starting centre-backs to start as well. Kivio should look all right. It's a £20 million pound signing. Yeah. Jorginho came into brilliantly. Xhaka starts every week. Vieira, £30 million, £5 million pound signing. And then whoever you pick, those options for the front three, I think we're happy with all of them. So if Arsenal have a bit... You know like that <coughs> night in Eindhoven, that PSV night where we lost 2-0 but we looked awful. Like, mm. they just completely blew us away. We can't be having that. Like, mm. the, while I understand the whole debate we had about rotation and just go with your first 11, Turkish is... I mean, really, bringing Tommy Asu and Vieira shouldn't impact things that much. Mm -hmm. But that is... The, that's the truth of it. So, that's the, Arteta needs to get that right um, and the team need to get that right as well. Um, so oh, I, I think I think the players mentally know that there's going to be rotation in this game. 
Right, so they're kind of more. Yeah, I get what you mean. More, more. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I think Saka starts. You know, I'm not so sure. I've got a feeling that 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 more first team players will play. Yeah, I think. think. I'm not against that. Look, if he if he goes with like a pretty much first eleven bar the goalkeeper, I'd be like okay, but I would I would I mean I wouldn't be angry about it. I, I'll never really be angry at a manager taking competition seriously if that makes sense. Now, what, what, listen, whatever he does, he does. But I'm just really now interested what those two at the top are going to predict now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we get into that, this is your time now, people. You know, the loyal um, supporters of the podcast, subscribers of the channel. Give us some more lineups for the sporting game. Um, what would you go with? We pretty much agreed all the way to the front three, and that's where, you know, um, we have differing opinions. So I, I want to see what you guys and girls out there think that, you know, we should do against sporting. And don't forget, we've got Fulham away on Sunday, which is, you know, a, a difficult picture. We've, we've Fulham doing very well so far this season. But yes, we are moving on to predictions for that game against Sporting. Before we do, here is the prediction leaderboard. Not much change because we all got a point after the Bournemouth result. No one got a correct score. Who would have predicted a 3-2 win? Um, and just for the listeners on the audio platforms, there's 34 games played, 34 predictions made. I'm top on 32 points. Jordan second, 31 points. Lee's in third on 30 points. And Catch up, James- mate. Changes on twenty-two points, as Jordan said. Catch up, mate. Um, so that's Look, I'm, I'm in. I'm in the top four. That was my goal for the season. You yeah, know, well done, I, I, well that's well all done. I was thinking about, and I'm on course. Is there relegation though? That's what I want to know. Yeah, let's right in. Sure, right in. You know, I literally sure, work for the company. Like, you know, like <laughs> what do you mean rele- what? relegated? Yeah, not, relegated. Relegated to like United View. <laughs> Go back to Invincibles. Uh, cool. Um, it is prediction time. And again, people, you can let us know your prediction in the comment section. But yeah, what am I going to go with? This? I really hate you, Lee. Like, I really dislike you. <laughs> you do bully me. The comments see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, dear. Sporting I've got tears in my eyes. Great in their, they're fourth in their league. Um, last time I checked, they were. Come on, it's not rocket science, sir. It's just, just come on, get on with it. Look at you rushing me from third position. How do you think? I'm first? How do you think I'm top of the league? A bit of oh. 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 <laughs> oh, that that's my problem. I answer too quickly. <laughs> Well, you got time to think. You're fucking the last <laughs> six. Like, have, 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 how much time do you want? Um, oh, I'm going to go a 2-0 Arsenal win. Ooh. A 2-0 Arsenal win. I'm confident about it. Sporting a four from the league like last, last time. <clears throat> and yeah, the, the team that I went with, you know, I'm not one thinking that it's... We could drop points in the first one and make it back in the second one. I, I picked the team that I think is strong enough with enough experience and leadership to to go over and win the game. Jordan, be mad if we drop points in a knockout game. Oh yeah, fucking hell, my words in there. That was for the take your time. Yeah, yeah I've just made no a decision that relegation is on this season. Right, I know. Go and join Talk of Sheep. One mistake you've made, Turkish. One mistake he's on you and he like jumped on you. Mr. <laughs> Roy doesn't have to do anything to take my place. He just has to merely exist. <laughs> Not for you. That's the beauty of it, James. That's the fucking beauty of it. Oh, man. <laughs> what, what, oh. Uh, what was that? Turkish 2 1 or 2 0, did you say? 2 0. I'm going 2 1. 2 1 Arsenal. You fucking bastard. Lee's not impressed. I think no, that was Lee, 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 Lee's got to go big now. I've snookered him. He's got to go big. And he, one, he didn't one. want to go big. 1-1. One, one. You disgrace. Absolute Burnley. disgrace. You are actually a disgrace for going against your team like that. <laughs> Look, you ain't got nothing to say or is he frozen or what's going no, on? No, I wanted to go 2-1. I was going to go 2-1, but... Um... Ah, oh, I'll change it two one to the Arsenal then. Two one. You're a discreet. You're a sham. I can't believe you actually. I can't believe you actually thought I'm going to go for a draw here and back against (laughs) Arsenal. You're a joke. 
What are you going? Then? One one. Two nil. Two, two one sporting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deadly serious. I actually don't think this is going to go well for us. People. No, no, that's why I'm. Well, I sh- oh, I've got. But I will change it. I'll go. I'll go two two. Um, but I actually don't think we're winning this game. It's just fun to wind up Lee. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. I, I, if it's I, one one, I'm going to kick your asses. I'll tell you like that. Right? <laughs> and if yeah. it's two one, I'm going to be vexed that I questioned your one one. So um it is what it is. We. Move. Yeah, I'm, I'm really for the sake of backing the team. I'm going two two. But I really am. Leaning towards the sporting, yeah, and do you know what? One, one, two, two, and a bear result over there. If I'll be honest, yeah, it's not, it's not, no, not at all. It's not, but I, I fear about the performance we might get of the Lord Mayor's show. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's fair. So, what is it? One, two, no, a couple, two, ones, and a two, two. Um, so I've got quite a confident prediction there, but oh, yeah. it, it, it is because we, we've got our main strikers out, and we're still all saying we think we're going to score two goals. That is very, very um, bold of us. Yeah, well, exactly. Mm, yeah. yeah. But anyway. Uh, should I change my mind? No. Yeah, I'll stick with you two. Too late. It's locked in. We move. That's all the oh. predictions, people. Um, let us know yours in the comments. And on the note of comments, let's do comments of the day. If everyone... I'll go first. Um, I've just got a simple one here I really liked from Shiv. Yeah, Shiv says, love how this pod is two to three times a week. Pleasure to listen to. And I'm a Newcastle fan, which oh. says that we're doing something right there. Nice. So big up yourself, Shiv. Thank you so much. Um, ah, so Jordan might be a Newcastle fan then. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, always, yeah, yeah. We, we, we will get to find out if he actually supports uh, one day. I don't know what you're chatting about, mate. I don't know what you're chatting about. Shall I go next? No, go ahead. No. I've gone for Rupin Cal. The moment he said custard, I couldn't stop laughing. The inside jokes between these four and the regular listeners of the podcast are world class. But 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 the thing is, I wasn't even in on a joke. I didn't know about it until. No, I didn't know about it. I can't eat custard now. I have to. Have, I have to have uh, crumble and cream now. It's a joke. Oh, right? yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking you should take a couple of weeks off from saying what crumble kind of cream? and custard. I think those two words are banned from you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, James, what part of what made it so funny was I couldn't quite tell who'd clocked it. <laughs> I saw a little spark of Turkish, nothing from Jordan. Lee powered on, and I thought, is it just me? And that made me want to laugh more. But anyway, Alex says, uh, love this pod. Family been supporting the club for over 100 years, based in New Zealand. Never felt so connected to this club. Let's do it. Come on, you gunners. And it's a really nice comment. And um, uh, comment. Uh, I was uh. Um, I was chatting to someone on Fan Zone. I can't remember where they were calling in from. I think it was Australia. And they said that Perth. And it got me thinking in that moment. I said it on the show. One kick of a, of a bull made millions of people around the world go mental at the same time. Like, that's a very hilarious concept to me. But, um, yeah. yeah, thank you all for tuning in around the world. Yeah, day and night as well. It's just it's crazy. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of love in with Arsenal and football in general. Uh, let me round it up. Andrew, um, he says, big up, Jordan. You're a miserable sod, but the show wouldn't be the same without wow. you. Wow. James, stop being a young old man. Lots of, <laughs> I'll lots, take that. Lots That's of good. lovely. And Turkish, you're my favourite on AFTV. Ah, oh, How come you two got this, the out and out yeah, compliments? You know... We are the top guys, aren't we, Sir? This yeah. is like when Lee and Jordan are flirting behind our back the other day. <laughs> Get a room. <laughs> that, hold on. I thought we had a line for all of us. No. Uh, that's no. it. Do you know what? I'm starting the the Forever Arsenal, Forever Arsenal. Arsenal. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Forever Arsenal too. With Julian. <laughs> Forever and Arsenal. recruiting. The Misfits. Start that one. Thanks for Yeah, come with a good name. I told you I completed one. I, I, I want to see that, mate. James and Julian. That's for sure. The James and Julian podcast. Julian, for watching this, it's been an absolute I'm, pleasure. I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm all good. <laughs> Still be better uh, than Invincible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> low blow. Low blow. 
Hopefully there's Robbie never sees comments. this. There's another one for the comment section. Which pod do you like better? Is it Forever yeah, Arsenal or the Invincibles? Yeah. Let us know that's, below. That's, that's a good question. It's like choosing between your mum and dad, Lee. That is just an Yeah, I, don't listen. I love both. I love both. <laughs> I love no, both. no, 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 no. You, lo- you say you same. love Forever the Arsenal when you're here. And when you're over there, you can say, you say whatever you want. But whilst you're here, who's your favourite, Lee? The tactical show. Good work. work. Sends me to sleep every day without foul. I mean, fantastic. I'll I'll, I'll tell you this. I walked in on um, the recording of the Invincibles on Thursday morning. They had no idea I was in the room. And I I listened to most of the podcasts. I clocked one thing that Lee, in fairness to him, Mr. Consistent, does in both podcasts. No matter what, he delivers on both podcasts. He manages to slag me off. <laughs> no matter whether you're, whether you're there, not there, whatever podcast. Well, I'll slag, I don't, what did I slag you off on then? Oh, I'll go find it. It's in the last episode of Invincibles. Oh, you had a pop at me. But I was planning a world class tactical insight, so I had no time to come over and scrap you. <laughs> Imagine just snuffing in mid invincible podcast. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, listen, we're back after the sporting game before the Fulham game. Um, look out for that one on it, might be Friday, it might be Saturday. Lee's going over to Portugal, to yeah, maybe, so, maybe Sunday. Uh, no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. We're trying to we're trying to get the pod done straight after the game on Thursday if we can with Lee over there in Portugal. But if we can't, then look out for it on Saturday as early as possible. But listen, people, if you're subscribed, if you've got the notification bell on, you'll know as soon as it comes out. It so, make... <laughs> so make sure you are make sure you've hit the like button because by now an hour and eleven minutes in, we should be on a thousand likes. I'm not lying to you. You, you know. And I should be in bed, Turkish. I'll show yeah, you that now. Like, yeah. that's, why I think I, that, that, that's why I tend to think at 8 a.m., but you two over there on the right hand side of the screen, you lot, you, you know. No, no, I, I never said today. I, like someone said, Jordan, my, you know, who doesn't like me, by the way, who's confessing, <laughs> said, I would really appreciate 11 o'clock. So no, 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 no. This one wasn't on me. Who was it on me? Not me. Listen, it was, it was on me. Or, me or James, and I don't this, care. This one was on me. This later oh, one was on James. I prefer yeah. it. I prefer this, it. Oh, I just, oh, oh, like I am, though, I just go with the flow, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so easy going. <laughs> so easy going. Don't care. Just as long as I as long as long I can do the, do what I do with you guys, I don't care if it's in the morning or in the evening. I'll just end the stream, man. Just cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're out.